Do you want to look at this or? It's... Yes. Okay. Yeah, okay. Um, shall I read it or do you want to read it? It's paragraph two. Paragraph two, how does false religion misrepresent God by its actions? Yeah. False religion does not treat people as Jehovah does. The Bible says that false religion sins have massed together clear up to heaven. Revelation 18, 5. And for centuries, religions have meddled in politics, supported wars and caused or, and caused or approved the death of countless numbers of people. Some religious leaders enjoy a lavish lifestyle and demand money from their followers to pay for it. These actions prove that they do not even know God, let alone have the right to represent him. And then it quotes reading John 4, 8. 1 John 4, verse 8, sorry. Um, I found a, a an Awake article from 1993, which seems to back this up. It calls religions that are involved in warfare pawns of Satan the devil. I was a bit shocked when I read this. Um, okay. This is the 22nd of April, 1993, page, I do need glasses, you know, page six. Rather than encourage love for one's brother, the churches have supported and even promoted the killing of one's brother in war. Thus they have become pawns of Satan, the devil, just as assuredly as were the religions of the ancient Egyptians, Assyrians, Babylonians and Romans. It does seem emphatic in your literature that any religion that's involved in warfare or politics cannot represent Jehovah God. And if you're involved in warfare, you, you're serving Satan, the devil. Uh, have I understood that correctly? It's not, yes, but in the sense of warfare at this point for, hum, uh, for, for Christians who want to follow God is not something that he encourages. Is that what you mean? I'm, I'm asking you, is your literature saying that true religion does not get involved in politics and warfare? I think Enjoy Life Forever yes. is very clear in yes. saying you can't represent Jehovah God. You can't be a representative of Jehovah God if you're involved in either politics or warfare. Is that right? Correct. That's what it says, yes. But the Watchtower has a very long history of constant involvement in, in politics and warfare. Not at your level, not at the level of ordinary people who sit on seats in kingdom halls but at the level of the two watchtower corporations and the leaders of the watchtower corporation um, for instance i'll give you one example from the watchtower itself uh, during the first world war the watchtower supported the american military in the first world war in the watchtower of the 15th of may 1918 page 6257 of the green reprints rutherford knew he was about to be arrested so he wrote a few articles, that's one of them, promoting the purchase of the Liberty Bond to his readers in America and suggesting that they support the American military in the First World War. He, he did this so it could be a defense in court. Rutherford also took part in a National Day of Prayer, doing exactly what Jehovah's Witnesses today condemn the clergy for. He, he went on a raised platform do, during the American National Day of Prayer and Rutherford prayed with Catholic priests and Protestant clergymen during a National Day of Prayer. We don't have any photographs of that, but it's, it's recorded by numerous writers. Mm -hmm. So that's an example of the Watchtower in the pages of the Watchtower magazine supporting the military in the First World War. I am not aware of that, sorry. I can't answer for that at this moment because I have not read that information as that goes back to, when did you say, 19? 19... 1918. You can always write it down and get back to me. No, I can. I will. Yeah. Um, in the Second World War, the context now is only in Australia. The Watchtower for the 1st of June, 1947, page 173, talks about the situation in Australia during the Second World War. This is now the Second World War, which finished in 1945, two years before this Watchtower article. And it talks about young people who went for Bethel service was sent instead to work in military bases in canteens or, quote, working in machine shops producing instruments of war. Now, it doesn't explain what working in machine shops producing instruments of war actually meant, but I've done some research and I found out that that's the Taylorcraft Aircraft Corporation, owned by a wealthy Jehovah's Witness called Mr. Taylor, 
and during the Second World War, Taylor Craft just produced military aircraft for the Australian Royal Air Force, and it was stuffed full of Jehovah's Witnesses. That's during the Second World War, and that's admitted in the Watchtower. Um, I believe there is a yearbook, I can't remember the, um, the date or the reference, but they did talk in one of the later yearbooks, many, many decades later, about quite a few errors that were happening in Australia during the Second World War. But there hasn't been a proper apology for this. Jehovah's Witnesses were actually making military aircraft in the Second World War, whilst at the same time other Jehovah's Witnesses were imprisoned. Mm. I can see why you'd... Why? Yeah. I mean... What's the first reference that you had uh, for the, the Watchtower, Watchtower 1918? The, the First World War is the Watchtower. It's actually called Zion's Watchtower at the time. Uh, 15th of May, 1918. And in the Green Reprints, published in 1920, it's page 6,257. Mm. And then the second one, what year was that? 1st of June, page 173. 1st of June, 1947, Watchtower page 173. Yeah. Um, today, the Watchtower Bible and Tract Society of New York is the sole beneficiary of the, of the Henrietta M. Raleigh Trust. This is um, basically a trust set up by a woman who died in 1945. She was very wealthy. She decreed that all her assets be turned into shares and the sole beneficiary since 1945 is the Watchtower Bible and Tract Society of New York. Um, today they're getting roughly half a million to three quarters of a million dollars a year. And right. it's just share dividends. It's administered by the Commercia Bank of Detroit. And they have to submit, legally, they have to submit accounts to the IRS, the Internal Revenue Service, the American Tax Authorities, to get tax status. Uh, so that's how you can find out about them. And they have a portfolio of shares, a fairly standard portfolio of shares, including uh, investments in arms companies, such as Northrop Grumman, which makes the B-2 bomber, and Honeywell, which makes military equipment, and um, other similar companies that make military equipment. Um, if this was truly God's organisation, I don't think... Well, I... I <laughs> I don't think they would have taken part in the First World War, firstly, no. and I don't think God would it's have appointed them in the year from... 1919. I, 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 I don't think God would have chosen them in the year 1919 as they were involved in the First World War. But today, they're doing what they've always done. I, I think the bottom line for most of these religious groups is money. It's all about money, mate. It's not about serving Jehovah, it's about money. And um, not, not only do they get share dividend today, from arms companies, but there is um, a company that the Henrietta M. Riley Trust has shares in called Lionsgate Entertainment. They do make films, but they also make soft pornography. And the Watchtower derives share dividends from that. So I can't see how this is Jehovah's organization. Well, I, uh, I, can't, I, can't, I can't, as you well know, answer any of that because that's all either way above my head or uh, way back in history that I would have to start investigating to have a look to even get any information mm -hmm. that could help with answering your questions sure. on any of that. Absolutely, Robert. There's no two ways about it. I mean, it's the first I've ever heard of it. I was brought up and I, I have been brought up as one of Jehovah's Witnesses, just so you're aware. But all my life, I have not really gone down the route of the funding side or where the investments come in to help support the organization in its efforts to produce the literature uh, and the information that it does um, i have always had the understanding that it was um, always above board and honest uh, yes and but all religions tell you that just raised yes quite i mean that that's a fair that it's a fair point you've done your homework and that's what you've found I can't question or, and I'm certainly not going to try and make any um, amends for it because I can't. I, I have no idea where all this is, where, where all your information has come from and how. I know you can say you can go and read this here, here and here. That is absolutely fine. But it's, it's just, 
your your question is are you wanting to know where the true religion is and you've done a, an investigation on this side of it this is just to help me answer the reasoning why you're looking at the organization the way you are is it because you are looking for truth is it because you are looking for answers in your life about a hope for the future because that's all i've picked up from my studies is that's what i wanted is this life really all it is is there a hope for this future is this what we're blended with or is there something else so i've only ever come at it from that way robert to be honest not not from an angle that you've just presented to me so you can see why i would ask that question yeah right i, I want to obey jehovah god nowhere in the bible does it say jehovah god is going to send an organization or, or a religion to be our savior the Father yep, sent a right. Messiah. Yeah. He sent Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ said, come to me, all you who are heavily laden, and I will give you rest. Matthew eleven yes. twenty eight, a verse I've used often yes. with Seventh-day Adventists when I've spoken to Seventh-day Adventists, a verse which right. they hate, because they say, no, you've got to go to our organization. Salvation is yeah. in our organization, the Seventh-day Adventist organization. You've got to right. join a church, get baptized, pay your tithe do various things on on saturday it, it's right. all a load of nonsense christ said come to me he didn't say come to an organization there is no organization there's only christ but what happens is you have middlemen between christ and yourself and these middlemen form basically religious organizations um I just got distracted by a text. Um, they 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 form religious organisations which basically become religious middlemen. So you get to Jesus through the Seventh Day Adventist Church. You've got to obey all the rules of the Seventh Day Adventist Church. You've got to obey your Seventh Day Adventist pastor, and then you can get to Jesus. My background is in the Pentecostal movement. I used to be okay. a Pentecostal. Okay. Okay. So yeah, you sure. lordy praising you Jesus and you go to all these meetings, you pay all your tithe, you get all excited and you have a good old babble in tongues, which is really just drivel. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, you get you, all you, excited. You, work, you understand it, yeah, very yeah, true. You get all excited. But really what they're doing is and I'm not saying it's true in every single case, but it is well, it's certainly very widespread today. The Pentecostal church becomes a middleman between you and Jesus. You can't get to Jesus unless you find a pastor. You know, you, you think you can get to Jesus all on your own? You think you're saved by grace? Of course not. You're saved through yeah. the church system. Yeah. You've got to find a good church. You've got to go to a church, sit in a pew, and jump up and down and bang a tambourine. And you, you better raise your holy hands, because if you, if you don't raise your holy hands, you're probably not filled with the Holy Spirit, brother. And you've got to pay your tithe yeah. and do this and do that and do the other. Okay. And in the end, your, they, they will tell what? you you're saved by grace. But what they really mean is you're saved by works. And you're doing works for the religious organization, the religious middleman. Because you can't get to Christ directly. You can only get to Christ. As I was told, I was in the oneness, which was a pretty extreme Pentecostal movement. But to be okay. honest with you, over the last 30 years since I left the oneness well 33 years now um it's got far far worse you you'll find this in a whole host of evangelical churches now you can't get to christ except through the church system and the church pastor and the church building and the church organization yeah yeah i get you i understand you yes the thing that the thing that I, then comes to mind when i'm i'm just thinking about what you're saying Jesus said he would have, have a faithful and discreet slave. No, he didn't. No, he didn't. He asked a question. He didn't make a statement. You're reading it as a statement. It's a question. Matthew, Matthew 24, 45. Yeah. And I, I would, yeah. I would yeah. really, I mean, if you want to discuss it, I, 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 okay. I, I think it would be best if you wish to discuss the faithful and discreet slave, you say, Robert, I'm going to speak to you in such and such a time on this topic and you prepare. Because I don't want okay. to do the same topic twice. Because I found okay. if you allow a person to get back to you, then 10 minutes after they got back to you, they say, actually, I didn't do enough research. Can I get back to you a third time, Robert? I understand. And then the third yeah, time they get back to me, they still don't understand. really know the topic. 
So they say, can I get back to you a fourth time? So they want to discuss the same topic for week after week after week because they don't know it. So I've got a general rule, and that is you look at something once and you never discuss it again. But you may have picked this up in the organization that they do discuss things on a regular basis, the same or similar topics, um, because as you can probably appreciate, different ones may come in and they've not heard about it, so it will be covered again. So in in this world that I'm thinking about, that, that does happen. So I wouldn't want you to get frustrated over that if somebody does that or if I even do that at the moment, because the the pattern of memory, human memory and forgetfulness, it, particularly in my, in my head, yeah. is not, is, I'm so I would apologize from the beginning if I do repeat myself over something you may have covered yeah. in our discussion, for example. Could, yeah. can I, could I go on to politics briefly? Would that be possible? Um, you share what you want. I don't get involved with it, but you can, you can ask your question. No problem. I know that, but, but the watchtower corporations are involved in politics and have been for decades. Right, from what you're saying, yes. Um, this you can check out quite easily if you go to uri.org. URI is the United Religions Initiative. It's an ecumenical group of religions that are coming together for common, for common aim. Now, one of URI, the United Religions Initiative's um, projects, is Fundiathon Themis, or the Themis Foundation in English. And it involves evangelicals, Catholics, and Jehovah's Witnesses working together. I'll read it to you. Um, Fundiathon Themis, Themis Foundation, a registered NGO, that means it's a branch of the United Nations, which Jehovah's Witnesses say is of the devil, was created to serve the community in three areas of education, health and the environment. Members are very committed evangelicals, Catholics and Jehovah's Witnesses who have gathered their strength to serve humanity and to support disabled, needy and deprived people, as well as sharing an interest to work for the safety and the protection of Mother Earth. Members also promote moral and spiritual values in young people. They work with youth so that they become positive actors in the community, especially in caring for the environment. Members of FEMAS are proud of their efforts in helping children and the elderly to read and write. Well, I certainly approve of helping um, young people to read and write and doing good works in the community. But the, wish, the point I wish to make is this is Jehovah's Witnesses working with evangelicals and Catholics. That's what it says. If this is a lie, you would sue them and take them to court because your literature says that the Catholics yeah. and the evangelicals are of the devil. Your literature says yeah. that. It does. It's, well, it says that they are, yes, it, uh, as we've just discussed, yeah, they are under that um, the sphere of Babylon the Great, yes. Um, so where's the, could where, I, could, which tab do you think to, under for action areas under URI? Um, because Fun I've never heard of that. No, no, okay. no. Fun we're, we're taught that, that interfaith is not something we get involved with. So, uh, um, could I just quote the 1975 yearbook of Jehovah's Witnesses, published in 1974 on page 98, says that Satan has used Protestants and Catholics to destroy God's remnant. Uh -huh. So you do believe that the Catholics and Protestants are of the devil. Uh -huh. um, and in another article in The Awake for the 22nd of April 1993, page 6, the churches are here called Pawns of Satan the Devil. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> I have an idea about this, and I could be wrong. I think that the Jehovah's Witnesses' involvement with URI and Fundia Theonfemus is almost negli negligible. I think it's virtually zero. It's probably only two or three Jehovah's Witnesses, and the amount of money and time and effort they're contributing to it is probably very small. Now, I can't prove this, this is my theory. What I think Jehovah's Witnesses have done is they've joined a series of groups like interfaith groups, where they're working with Catholics and Protestants. They've done that so that when they're taken to court, and people quote in court, 
that Jehovah's Witnesses believe Catholics and Protestants are of the devil, as in the quote I showed you from the 1975 yearbook, page 98. The Jehovah's Witness lawyer, barrister, can then stand up and say, um, Your Honor, no, this is not true, because we Jehovah's Witnesses, we work with other Christians of other faith. Here is evidence. Look at URI, the United Religions Initiative, um, the Themis Foundation. We work with our brother Christians who are Catholics and Evangelicals. So I don't believe Jehovah's Witnesses have joined for anything other than a defense in court and when the charity status of Jehovah's Witnesses is queried, because many people have written to the Charities Commission and tried to get them stripped of their charity status, uh -huh. for one reason, because you believe everyone else is of the devil, Jehovah's Witnesses can turn around and say, no, it's not true. We don't believe everyone else is of the devil because we work with Catholics and evangelicals. What they don't tell the court the and what they don't tell out. the Charity Commission is, is probably only two or three senior Jehovah's Witnesses who've got involved. There aren't thousands of Jehovah's Witnesses working with Catholics yeah. and Evangelicals. It's probably only two or three. And what you want is your name um, on the website or on headed paper. You want some sort of written statement that you have an association with uh, Catholics and Evangelicals through interfaith I groups. So you can use that I in court. I don't quite follow that though, Robert, because you're told to get out of to touch nothing on clean why would you then associate with something that you're then going preaching to say get out of that doesn't stand up the thought the logic for me doesn't stand up the information that you're sharing with me again links us with things that i've been taught that were not to be a part of because how can you stand separate from the world around you if you are linked with it tenuously even that doesn't stand up or make sense to me so again information needs to be checked from my side to help understand that for you but in the sense that you're sharing it fair enough mm. but mm. i wouldn't I, the, the organization will stand on its own from my understanding the organization will stand on its own for what it is because it is no part of any other religious organization it is no part of any charity other charities it is no part of any other affiliation with any other religious or commercial in the sense of what you're talking about i i've never had that um shared with me for for as a as a well why does this happen why is the or even the the openness of of the funding for the organization is is out there like you say the organization will make either comments or statements in its literature uh, like you've highlighted and yes um, historically those comments they go back like you say um, to the 70s and even back into the uh, early 1900 or 20th century but the organization is to stand on its own to be its own entity for what it's to do and that is to help people come to know and understand god's purpose for humans and the preaching work that takes place because of that it should never be then brought into question that it's affiliated with as you've said catholics or any other religion because how can a how can i go to a door and stand there and say that that religion does not teach god's way and yet be affiliated with it in the background somewhere else that to me doesn't quite stack up as a logical link for the organization to do that and the way that, that they share their information to help give us confidence with making that statement to you now, for example, for me, is by the fact that they've been consistent with they would not be part of anything like that going forward. Um, so they've always stated that to, from my mind. So to hear all this is it's it's new to me, for example. Um, well, Fundia Theon Femus which is a branch of URI, is an NGO of the United Nations. It's, it's a branch of the United Nations. But which, we're not part of that. Which, hang on, which your Watchtower magazine for the 15th of November 1982, pages 5 and 6, states that the UN, the United Nations, is of the devil. Um, are you aware that the um, Watchtower Bible and Tract Society of New York, this is another topic now, joined the United Nations as an NGO in 1992. 
Lloyd, Lloyd Barry, your then governing body member, signed the paperwork to sign you into membership of the United Nations. Not the Pennsylvania Corporation, the New York Corporation. Uh, no, I'm not aware, is the answer to your question. Uh, I, we're not part of it. How can you be part of something that you're then writing you about? Joined. This is the logic. You, you, you joined the United Nations. This was no. exposed in the Guardian newspaper of the 8th of October 2001. The Guardian had never been sued. The Watchtower sues everybody, left, right and centre. I was taken to court last year for criticising two Jehovah's Witness elders in Tiverton and Launceston. And they took me to court. Right. The case was thrown out of court. That was in a Plymouth Crown Court last year. Oh, well, so Jehovah's okay. Witnesses sue anything that moves. They've never sued the Guardian. The Guardian called them hypocrites. And it said that your literature at the time stated that the UN was of the devil. I think they were mostly referring to the book um, Revelation, its grand climax at hand. And then it pointed okay. out that you joined the United Nations, or rather the, the New York Corporation joined the United Nations in 1992. The day after the Guardian article, they resigned from the United Nations and the head of the NGO section of the United Nations, NGO means non-governmental organization, it's groups that are affiliated with the UN but which are not governments. The head of the NGO section, Paul Hoffiel, I have a copy of his letter. He, he actually wrote several letters, but his first letter was on the 11th of October 2001. And he sent out thousands of copies to people who had written to him asking, are Jehovah's Witnesses members of the UN? I can read the letter to you if you'd like me to read it. And he says, yes, you were members of the UN from 1992. You agreed to uh, abide by the charter of the UN and to promote the charter of the UN, which you did usually in Awake magazines, because you don't just join the UN. If you join the UN, you have to legally promote it. And so the Watchtower did that usually through the Awake magazine. Um, uh -huh. Now, he says you were members of the UN. If this is a lie, and I've got the letter here, I'm going to read it to you on UN headed paper. <laughs> Why hasn't the Watchtower taken him to court and sued him and sued the UN for slander or, or, or libel? They haven't because it's all true. I'll read it. It's on UN headed paper. 11th of October 2001. To whom it may concern. Recently the NGO section has been receiving numerous inquiries regarding the association of the Watchtower Bible and Tract Society of New York with the Department of Public Information DPI. This organization applied for association with DPI in 1991 and was granted association in 1992. By accepting association with DPI, the organization agreed to meet the criteria for association, including support and respect of the principles of the Charter of the United Nations and, and commitment and means to conduct effective information programs with its constituents and uh, and to a broader audience about UN activities. In October 2001, the Watchtower Bible and Tract Society of New York requ requested termination of its association with DPI. Following this request, the DPI has made a decision to disassociate the Watchtower Bible and Tract Society of New York as of the 9th of October 2001, that's the day after the Guardian article. We appreciate your interest in the work of the United Nations. Yours sincerely, Paul Hoffiel, Chief NGO Section, and that's on UN headed paper. Now, Paul Hoffiel hasn't been sued for libel or slander. The UN hasn't been sued for libel and slander, and they sent out thousands of these letters because they got, they got inquiries from all over the world. And the Guardian newspaper hasn't been sued because it's all true. The Watchtower Bible and Tract Society of New York joined the Un United Nations in 1992 and they didn't, they didn't do it to get a library card because anyone could go in off the street, show ID and use the UN library at the time. Security wasn't tightened up until after 9-11. So don't say that they did it to get a library card because that is a lie. 
I've seen the no, correspondence. Well, I, don't, I don't even know that. I can't even answer any of that, um, Robert. To be uh, quite honest with you, uh, in that regard, so I wouldn't be saying anything about a library card. <laughs> Minimal. Yeah. So that's what they'll it's... tell you, and it's it's a lie. That's what they will tell you, and they are lying. But overall, what um, what do you want to do with? historic answers like this answer do you want answers yeah. historic questions do yeah. you want answers yes is is there history that you want just cleared up to help yes. you what what, yes. what are you after robert please? why is the watchtower so involved in politics and warfare when it condemns any religion that has any involvement in warfare and politics as being a pawn of satan the devil isn't that hypocrisy to criticise the Catholics and the Anglicans relentlessly criticise them for their involvement in warfare when Jehovah's Witnesses have done exactly the same. In fact, I'd say they're far worse than the Anglicans and the Catholics, because at least the Anglicans and the Catholics are honest in saying that they have supported warfare in the past. And they have had, um, I remember there was a BBC News article about the Anglicans and the Catholics investing pension money in various companies, including European arms companies, and it made the BBC News. And people mm. said what a scandal it was. Now, mm. they've never claimed to be pacifist. And I'd say that the Jehovah's Witness position is far worse than the Catholics or the Anglicans because they, they lie. They use theocratic warfare on you, an elder, because, you know, you're not a, you know, you are aware that many people who run many religions, including the Watchtower, are Freemasons, high-level Freemasons at the higher level. No, I'm so not they use that, to so be honest, they Robert, so because... they use theocratic warfare on you. Um, well, whatever the case, what it has taught me, Robert, a relationship with Jehovah to learn about Him through this organisation has given me a hope that whatever we've discussed up to this point is, I have to say, a question mark for me in my mind, full stop, because I don't know any of it. I've not heard of any of it. I've not been taught any of this or even picked anything up like this from even long-term members historically who were maybe in their 70s, 80s or 90s when I, you know, even when I was younger and spoke to them, never said, to, not that they would then be told they couldn't share it because just like the Bereans, you question everything. There's no reason not to. However, nothing of this sort has ever passed by my eyes or ears. So uh, from that side of it, I have to say, Robert, I have to park that and see yeah. what happens, yeah, sure. see what information sure. I can get. But it's given me a focus in life, and it's given me a hope, and it's given me a purpose. And I think you will know from your background, your knowledge. I mean, I don't get, I don't know your background. I don't. Pentecostal know, and Baptist. Sorry, or even your working life. Your, you know, your, I don't know your that side of it. But you obviously are very interested in understanding all of these things. Which, granted, um, hats off to you for that. But to know and learn a way of life that has kept my, you could say, nose clean. I have lived as best as I can be an honest life because we're all imperfect. You don't know whether you've done this, that or the other, but you do know whether you this is wrong, that or wrong, and you make your decisions accordingly. So building a relationship through prayer and through study has given me that focus and it's that that I base Excuse my... Me. You said Sorry. earlier that you, you have a relationship with Jehovah through this organisation. Yes, it's pointed me in the right direction is what I feel, yes. Right, where's that in the Bible? Where does it say you have a relationship with Jehovah through an organisation? Can you show me the Bible verse that says that? No, I can't. I'm, I'm talking about the fact that this organisation... I, I have spoken, as you are probably well aware, when we go knocking on and speaking to people. However, you end up talking to somebody about religion uh, or whatever. Um, that They say to me, it is only through Jehovah's Witnesses that they have seen that there is a focus toward studying the Bible and getting to build a relationship with God. 
because their purpose is to help you do that. It doesn't say that in the Bible at all. You're quite right. I wouldn't ever question that. But they use the Bible more so than any other religion to help build that relationship is is what I was trying to say, really, in essence. Approve it. Prove they use the Bible more than any other religion. I think they um, use their literature. Historically, I think they use their literature, but they don't use the Bible. They use a few isolated, out of context verses usually, but they focus more on their literature than they do on the Bible. Um, a Bible study mm. actually ends up being a book study where people uh, go through a Jehovah's Witness book. Look, Second Timothy. Yeah, you're quite right. Yeah. Yeah. yeah okay. That's huge. Right. I'm not going to argue yeah. that with you. Second, Second Timothy chapter 3 verse 16 and 17 says that with the bible we're thoroughly equipped because the bible reveals christ now don't get me wrong i do believe very occasionally it has happened to me very very occasionally three times in 30 years i believe that god has spoken to me directly to guide me and to correct me in my life but there's no revelation of christ outside of the bible if you want to know Christ, you don't, don't go to the Mormons, you don't go to the Pope, you don't go to the happy, clappy, charismatic TV preachers, you don't go to the Seventh-day Adventists, you don't go to the Way International, you don't go to the Christadelphians. They say you do. All of those groups say you go to them and they'll reveal Christ to you. But Scripture reveals Christ alone and you're thoroughly equipped. Verse 17, thoroughly equipped with just the Bible alone. And that means thoroughly equipped to know the Messiah. I'll read it. All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. That the man of God may be complete, not partial, complete, uh -huh. thoroughly yeah. equipped for every good work. So I don't need the Book of Mormon. I don't need the Pentecostal ravings of the charismatics with their tongues and words of knowledge and prophecies. I don't need the writings of Ellen G. White and the Seventh-day Adventist, and I don't need the Watchtower writings either. I'm thoroughly equipped to know who Christ is and to build a relationship with Christ with the Bible, because the Bible reveals Christ. The Watchtower literature, the Book of Mormon, the Pentecostal prophecies and tongues and visions and um, all the rigmarole that they have, the writings of Ellen G. White of the Seventh-day Adventist, none of these things can can add to scripture because scripture is complete and it's thorough it is it is um, um, I suppose you have looked at the New World Translation that Jehovah's Witnesses use yes yes you didn't have one scholar who worked on the translation does that make a difference yes because the Bible is written in Greek and Hebrew and people who don't know the Greek and Hebrew language shouldn't really attempt a Bible translation and then twist that Bible translation to accord with their religion's teachings. Um, the, do, you, do, you know, do, you, do you know that there, were, there was six people who worked on the 1950 Greek scriptures and Frederick W. Franz was the head translator. Are you aware of that? Yes, I have heard. He had one year of university study at the University of Cincinnati from 1913 to 1914, and then he dropped out and became a Jehovah's Witness. So right. what he did in that one year at Cincinnati, I don't honestly know. But in 1954, four years after the publication of the Greek scriptures of the New World Translation, Mr. Fla Franz flew to Scotland as a defense witness in the Douglas Walsh trial. Douglas Walsh was a Jehovah's Witness who went on trial. And Mr. Right. Franz defended him. Now. The prosecution barrister, Mr. France was a witness for the defence, the prosecution barrister asked Mr. France on the court transcript, I possess a copy of it, on page 7, do you speak, and then he mentioned a, a, a wide number of European languages, and he also asked, do you also speak um, Greek, Hebrew and Latin, and Mr. France said yes to that. Now, I don't deny that Mr. Franz was a very clever, self-educated man. He did speak many European languages, admittedly with a very strange, thick Brooklyn accent. So his French and his Spanish sounded exactly like his um, English. Um, but he, right. was a very, he was a very clever man. He's much cleverer than, than me. I, I don't deny that for a moment. But he said on page 7 of the court transcript that he spoke Greek, Hebrew and Latin. 
So what the prosecution barrister did later on, on page 102 and 103 of the court transcript, was to hand Mr. Franz a Bible and ask him to translate Genesis chapter 2 verse 4, which I think is the first verse in which the word Jehovah appears, or, well, it's actually YHWH, the tetragrammaton appears in the Bible. Could he please translate that from English into Hebrew for the court? And Mr. Fran said, I couldn't possibly do that. So he, he, he's the head translator of the New World Translation and under oath in court, he lied, he perjured himself under oath and proved that he didn't have any knowledge of the Hebrew language at all because apparently Hebrews 2.4, I don't speak Hebrew, but apparently it's first year, it's first year level Hebrew. It's a very simple passage of the Bible in Hebrew. And it's okay. something that a first year Bible student would translate. Right. Mr. Franz perjured himself under oath in court. He couldn't translate it. That's the head of your translation committee. Look, I'm going to have to go because I've, I've got something to do. Could I just mention one other thing very briefly, if that's possible? And then I'm going to have to okay. go. The, yes. the Watchtower Corporations today, various Watchtower Corporations, who I think really use theocratic warfare on ordinary, honest-hearted elders like yourself, they are still involved in the United Nations today. They're involved in a branch of the United Nations known as the OSCE, the Organization for Security and Cooperation in Europe. That's um, a European political organization set up in the 70s when the SALT talks took place, SALT, Strategic Arms Limitation Talks, um, where Russia and America greatly reduced the number of nuclear weapons in Europe. OSCE was set up made of European parliamentarians to promote peace, so it had the best of intentions. Over the years, various religions have become hangers-on to OSCE, which is still a political group, um, most notably Scientology and Jehovah's Witnesses, who attend dozens and dozens and dozens of OSCE political meetings. Um, they're doing this because what they want is victim status. So the Scientologists and the Jehovah's Witness corporations that attend are trying to say, look, we're victims. <clears throat> we need to have laws passed in your European parliaments where we are given special protection from the state. In other words, if people disagree with us, we can send them to prison, as they tried to do to me uh, last year at Plymouth Crown Court. Now, here's just one OSCE meeting. I could be here for hours going through dozens of them. Cordoba of in Spain on the 8th and 9th of June 2005. At the top left hand of this page is the seal of the Spanish government. So this is a, a political organization, OSCE, having a political meeting in Spain under the jurisdiction of the Spanish government. It was called the OSCE Conference on Anti-Semitism and on other forms of intolerance because over the years, OSCE has moved in the direction of political correctness. And two Watchtower corporations sent three senior Jehovah's Witness representatives to that conference in Cordoba in Spain, representing the Watchtower Bible and Tract Society of Pennsylvania. So not the New York Corporation. The Pennsylvania Corporation was Mr. Gregory Allen, a senior Jehovah's Witness, and representing the European Association of Jehovah's Christian Witnesses, and that corporation has now changed its name, they've dropped the word Christian, were two senior Jehovah's Witnesses, Paul Gillies and Marcel Gillett. So that's, and I could go through meeting after meeting after meeting, political OSCE meetings. Um, one was even run by Jehovah's Witnesses in Poland in 2019, uh, where they dealt with uh, persecution or alleged persecution in the ex- Soviet Republic of Kyrgyzstan. Um, OSCE is not a court, it's a political organization. It's a branch of the United Nations. So Jehovah's Witnesses who say the UN is of the devil, they're still connected to the UN today. Um, and believe me, there's an awful lot more material. I, I've only just skimmed the surface. Um, wow, you've picked up a lot uh, in, in what you have skimmed. Yeah. Yeah, I, I mean, there, there was even a um, professor called Michael Stocking uh, in Norwich. And um, 
He was a Jehovah's Witness elder. He was a professor of earth science at the University of East Anglia. His obituary was given in the, uh, let me see, the Norwich Evening News. Uh, he died Monday, May the 21st, 1980, two, sorry, 2018, age 71. And his uh, service was to be held on Thursday, the 14th of June, 2018, at the Kingdom Hall of Jehovah's Witness, 53, Wendine Bothorpe, Norwich, NR5, 9HA, at 11am. Um, now, I found out that through somebody else, that Professor Michael Stocking, in his capacity as a university professor at the University of East Anglia, gave talks at the United Nations building in New York, was a professor at the United Nations University, as well as being a professor at the University of East Anglia, and had involvement with the United Nations whilst he was a Jehovah's Witness elder. Um, honestly, I can see why this would, this would like um, raise questions over your search for truth, yes. without a doubt. I do have to go. Um, it's been lovely oh, speaking to right. you. If you want to speak Thank again, you, I'm sorry about the mix-up. That was entirely my fault. Just send me a text. I can speak any day, but never on a Monday. And I That's can also no problem, Zoom Robert. if you want to see my ugly face. No problem at all. all right. We can Zoom. It's no problem. Lovely. That's great. Nice to, have, nice to have spoken to you. I forgot, yes. your, I forgot your name. It's My name's Eddie. Eddie. Yeah. Thank you, Eddie. Bye. All right. Bye.